The following program is paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. Well, hello, and thank you for joining us today. Today, we want to talk about the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit gives us the power to live our Christian life. His role is vital to every believer, yet very few of us fully understand his importance in our everyday lives. In John 14, 16, the Holy Spirit is referred to as the Comforter, the Counselor, the Helper, the Intercessor, and the Advocate. Today, Evangelist Reinhard Bonnke joins me to talk about this precious gift from God. First, here's a little more about Reinhardt's ministry. Evangelist Reinhard Bonnke is known for his huge gospel crusades throughout Africa, which attract millions of people. He grew up in Germany and began his missionary work on the African continent in 1974. To date, he's led 77 million people in the prayer of salvation. Reinhard is the founder of the international ministry Christ for All Nations. He also hosts conferences around the world aimed at equipping church leaders for evangelism. Well, Pastor Reinhardt, it's really good to have you with us today. We really appreciate all the many years that you've served God in the kingdom, and all the millions of souls, really, that have yes. come into the kingdom through your work. And I know that you could not have done what you have done without the power of the Holy Spirit in your everyday life, and I know that I couldn't have. But I think a lot of people in their everyday life, they're trying to live life without depending on that presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Can you just get us started off today by telling us who the Holy Spirit is and, and just give people an understanding? Yeah. The Holy Spirit, to my understanding from Scripture, is God in action on earth. Right. And, and the anointing means, that's my definition, faith confirmed by the presence of the Holy Spirit in one's life. That is anointing. This is how Jesus uh, uh, functioned. Yeah. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for right. He has anointed right. me yeah. to open the blind eyes and all that. We depend on the very same Holy Spirit for these wonderful, miraculous acts of God. He's our helper. I think the word depend is a key word today, even for our viewers at home. You know, so often we depend on the world, the government, our family, our own minds, our, you know, our own thoughts, our own plans, and you know, it's not that we don't want to depend on people, but first and foremost, yeah. we need to to set it straight every morning, yes. very early. God, I'm depending on you, yeah. and I cannot do anything without you. Acts 10, 38 is one of my favorite scriptures. Oh, yes. I'm quite sure you could quote it, but in the Amplified, it says, See how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, and in particular, curing all that were oppressed of the devil. Yes. I love that. So that anointing, which we all have that anointing too, it's really a word today that I don't think a lot of people are familiar with. Yeah, this is true. I think it is. it has uh, taken on many different meanings, but it is definitely the, the unction of the Spirit of God upon one's life, and uh, which is being fulfilled mm -hmm. as we put our trust in the Lord. And the big thing is this, there's always this perception that, that this is only for special people, right. yeah. you know? I, I come across it all the time. But uh, the truth is that on the day of Pentecost, there were 120 people there. Yeah. And, they, and one flame settled on each head, which means it's not a lottery to receive this right. wonderful anointing this fire baptism. Presence and the from power of God. Yes, it is for all. Yes. For the strongest, for the weakest. It is for men and women, boys and girls. Right. The Spirit of the Lord is here to be alongside us. It's for the housewife, it's for the businessman, it's, yes. it's for the, the, the teacher, the preacher, the, the school teacher. I always yes. say that you... I wouldn't even want to try to drive in traffic today without the anointing of the Holy Spirit, oh, yes. let alone trying to raise children. Yeah. Because when you are anointed or when you have the, the power and the presence of God in your life, when the, when the Holy Spirit 
is with you every single day and you're depending on him, then there are, there are gifts, supernatural gifts that come with that. And some of those gifts are discerning of spirits oh, yes. where you can, you just know whether you should or shouldn't do something or you, you can even get discernment about, well, you just kind of know one of your kids is doing something they shouldn't yeah. be doing. And, <laughs> and then they get, they yeah. get really surprised. Talk, talk a little bit about some of those gifts that are available to us in our everyday life. Um, these gifts are oftentimes uh, uh, mistaken as, as uh, something like uh, being an award. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that is a misconception. Uh, I look at the gifts of the Spirit in, in 1 Corinthians 12 as, as tools for the job. Yeah. They are tools for the job. Right. They are not medals of honors to be worn on Sunday morning. Or to in be church. displayed. And yes. Look what. Yeah. Look what, what I, I can have. do. Right. You know. Right. It is that I I report for work yeah. at the gate of the Lord. Right. And He opens the door and He says, "Wow, today I have this for you, right. that for you, that for you." Yeah. And He gives the exact uh, tool for that job. If, right. if I have to pray for a sick, he, he gives me the gift for right. that. If I have a, a, a difficult situation, uh, uh, spirits need to be uh, discerned, right. he gives me that gift right. or prophecy or what. Always the right tool for the given job. And this is so wonderful. And there's, you know, there's the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge, and I don't think that we even begin to understand how much we need that how often as you're depending on the holy spirit he will just you'll know something that you don't even know how you know it yes you, you just know or, or you know what you should do in a situation oh, and yes. really the gifts of the spirit are very misunderstood mm -hmm. and very often the enemy the devil himself is trying to shut those power gifts down because first of all he doesn't want us to be saved but if we are saved he doesn't want us to walk with any power yeah he doesn't want us to affect anybody in a positive way. Uh, how can we cooperate with the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives? He has come to abide, let's say, uh, a sprinter in a stadium, a mm -hmm. runner in a stadium. When he runs, he is not instructing his lungs to inhale more oxygen. Mm -hmm. It happens automatically. Mm -hmm. And when we work for God, the level of the anointing of power automatically increases. It always connects with the task mm -hmm. that God has given us. So it's not difficult. It just happens automatically. And you know, another thing is this. Uh, when the 120 people left the upper room in Acts chapter 2, we never read that they ever went back asking again. Uh, again for yeah, another right. Pentecost. Yeah. Why not? Because it was never needed. Right. The Comforter has come to abide. I want to encourage all believers, uh, you don't need to get new anointings all <laughs> no. the time. One is enough. That's right. One we, is enough. What the, the anointing abides. It never leaves. But in Ephesians, the Bible also says, be ever filled with the Spirit. And so for me in my life, I believe that although I always have that anointing, it never leaves me, that I keep that stirred up by spending time with God, by studying the word, by praying, by clean living. If I oh, do absolutely. anything that I think offends God by yeah. repenting and I, the anointing is precious. Yes. It is so amazingly valuable and we need to treat it as precious and yes. make sure that we value it and live our life in a way that's going to enhance that anointing yes. and not do anything to to shut it down. Yes, no, absolutely. On the other hand, you know, uh, some people are so worried that uh, that uh, they have offended the Holy right. Spirit yeah. and that the dove has, has taken off yeah. because there was one unclean thought right. in their minds. That's what some think. I don't think the Holy Spirit is a nervous dove. No, and he's not a legalist, you know. He no. certainly, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't go around looking for things that I've done wrong, trying to trying to clean myself up. But if, but if I'm convicted by the Holy Spirit, oh, yeah. then 
that's a different story. Uh, because one can grieve the Holy Spirit because he will not just fly yeah. away, but he can be grieved. Right. Exactly. So yeah. to live a clean life, I think, is a basic requirement. I always like to say, well, if the Holy Spirit's living in me and he's grieved, then I'm going to feel grieved. Mm -hmm. And so it's really good to stay in, in tune with the Holy Spirit. He's given to us so we can walk our life in a way that's going to be powerful mm -hmm. and also pleasing to God. I know you've got a lot of examples from your own life, and we're going to get back to those in just a minute. Well, stay with us. When we come back, we're going to continue our conversation about how you can have the life-changing power of the Holy Spirit in your everyday life. Who is Joyce Meyer Ministries? Well, we are a very large family of people who believe passionately in sharing Christ and loving people. This is the Peruvian jungle where you have helped build a well and a church, and it has revitalized this small village. And you are the people that make it all possible through God working through you. We're so grateful for the opportunities that God gives us. So when you ask who is Joyce Meyer Ministries, the answer is you are. Well, I'm here in Sri Lanka, and with me are some medical professionals that have volunteered their time to come here and help hurting people. And if you're a medical professional, a doctor, a dentist, a nurse, pharmacist, a chiropractor, please consider volunteering to come and help people who otherwise wouldn't have any help. So what do you think? Is this a good thing to do? Yeah! <laughs> Well, welcome back. My special guest today is Pastor Reinhard Bonnke, and we're talking about the vitally important role that the Holy Spirit plays in every believer's life. Well, Reinhardt, we were talking about the anointing, which yeah. is the power and the presence of God in our lives. It's, it's the ability, really, to be what God wants us to be. Yes. Not just to have salvation, but to live yes. saved, to live the life that God wants yes. you to live. Indeed. And I know that... Uh, You've had a tremendous ministry and experienced, I'm sure, the power of the Holy Spirit a lot in your life. Tell us some of your own experiences of being led by the Holy Spirit and how you saw that work. Yes. Um, you know, we kept records uh, from uh, 1987 on how many souls found Jesus as their Savior in, in our ministry, right. Ministry of Christ for Nations. And from 1987 till now, we have... 74 million wow. uh, uh, recorded decisions for Jesus Christ. This is something absolutely wonderful. But it all started, it all started, I think, smaller mm -hmm. than, than a mustard seed. Um, my father was a pastor, and one day I was in a meeting, a mission meeting. I can't remember who spoke. I can't remember the message. My mind must have been somewhere else. But suddenly, I heard the Holy Spirit speak in my heart and said, Reinhardt, when you are grown up, you will preach the gospel in Africa. I was so moved. I was the voice of the Holy Spirit. Was God calling you I was so moved. Yeah. I ran forward. I put my arms around my dad. I said, Papa, God has spoken to me. He said, son, what did he say? I said, he told me that when I'm grown up, I'm going to preach the gospel in Africa. Mm -hmm. My father said, your oldest brother will be my successor, <laughs> not you. And you know... Well, that wasn't very encouraging. <laughs> that was not encouraging at all. And he did not believe it for all these years until then I was... 17, 18, 19 years of age, I went as straight as an arrow for the calling of God. And it was the Holy Spirit encouraging me from right. stage to stage to stage and bringing me right into the center of this fantastic uh, harvest of souls for you know, God. It's a really good thing that you just said that even though you didn't have the encouragement of your your father, which of course would be very important to a young man, yes. uh, the Holy Spirit encouraged you. He's our comforter, yes. our counselor, and he is an encourager. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit to encourage. And so just for those of you at home today, just think about 
maybe you don't have the encouragement that you need. Maybe you feel you, you're supposed to be doing something. Uh, you know, you're not all called into ministry. A lot of you are living what you would call ordinary everyday lives, but maybe you feel you're supposed to start a business or you're supposed to go back to college or, you know, whatever the case might be. Or maybe you're just trying to survive everyday life. I went through a lot of years like that, just trying to raise my kids and get through the day. And many times I didn't have the encouragement that I needed. My parents were abusive to me, and so they didn't understand at all even what I was trying to do in serving God. But the Holy Spirit encouraged me. He encouraged Pastor Reinhardt, and the Holy Spirit wants to encourage you today, too, if you will listen to him and not what people have to say. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So the Holy Spirit is our encourager, and, and has, does God give us direction in our life? Does he show us what we need to do? He does. Uh, he gives us direction. And he also gives us correction yeah. uh, as needed. And I think that is a wonderful thing. Uh, he shows the way. And uh, if, 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 if I walk that way that he shows, I have found one thing. It's, it's one always hits the bull's eye. That's Absolutely. Right. Yes. God acts when we act. That's right. God He's, acts when we act. Yes. But some people always ask for power. Right but do nothing. Right. And I don't need power for doing nothing. <laughs> That's true. I like See? that. That's so, a great statement. <laughs> <laughs> so if I do something even beyond my own capacity, right. that's exactly when God comes in and he gives strength to, in, in, it, it, to those who are weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Yeah, you know, so many people today are bound up in addictions. They're addicted to all kinds of things, and they think they can't get free. And, you know, God has the power to yes. bring deliverance to us in every single area of our life. But we need him. We, we need to lean on him. We need to rely on him, and we need to believe. Yes. And that there's a great lacking of even believing in that power. There's power available for us to live our everyday life, to do everything from pray for the sick and see them get well, to having words of wisdom and knowledge, to understanding how to pray supernaturally when we don't know how to pray as we ought to pray, to knowing what to do and how to raise your children, knowing what to buy when you go. I mean, God can even lead you and direct you. No, don't, don't. He'll give you, like, take the peace away about buying a certain item because he knows you're going to get it home and it's not going to work. So the value of the Holy Spirit in our everyday lives is just unbelievable. I love what you said. We don't need power for nothing. <laughs> God gives us power for something. And you know, many times, it's been my experience, and I'm sure it has been yours too, that you don't experience that power until you step out in faith. Yes. Talk to us a minute about that stepping out in faith. Yes. Well, um, as I said, uh, uh, God acts when we act. Our act begets God's act. He comes in on it. He gives us direction, as we just spoke, sometimes correction, right. but he gives us direction. Absolutely. And if I move in that general direction, then he begins to tweak. Right. Yeah. And he begins to, 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 to refine until exactly. I am point, uh, like a cruise missile. I am right, uh, guided to the target. But if I go the opposite direction, he can't even guide me right. because I'm I'm away from everything. And you're going to be miserable. Said. Yes. You're, you're going to know. So, you know, we hear people say so often, something's just not right. Something's not right. And a lot of times the thing that's not right is we're not in sync with God. Yes. We're trying to do something that is pulling away from him and against him rather than moving with the flow yes. of what he's doing. Yes. No, but the, the will of God, you know, people who forever seek the will of God, are overrun by those who do the will of God. Yeah, I love that. Uh, and and, and uh, uh, God doesn't sit with sitters, and he doesn't sleep with sleepers, <laughs> yeah. but he goes with goers, and he works with workers. And when we do our little part, right. yeah. he comes in on it, and his will is done. I tell people a lot, happen. you know, in, in learning how to be led by the Spirit, because it is a journey. Mm. You know, when God touched my life, very profoundly back in the 70s. 
I was a believer, but I didn't really know anything about the power that was available to me. And when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit or the fullness of the Holy Spirit, there was a great move of God back then. God was just touching people in every denomination mm. and everywhere. Anybody that was hungry for God, mm. God was uh, anointing them and filling them yes. with his power. I didn't know anything about that power. Well, I got so excited being introduced to this wonderful Holy Spirit, but then sometimes you're kind of like a live wire that's a little bit dangerous and you need a little bit of, of direction. Uh, I was not accustomed to really being led by the Spirit or by uh, hearing from God in, in any kind of a way. And so I try to teach people all the time because sometimes people get afraid of things like hearing from God and being led by the Spirit. They just rather stay in a safe little religious boat and not get in trouble. But I learned by stepping out and finding out. Mm. It's exactly what you're saying about you take a step and then God kind of tweaks it. Yes. And then I just, you know, what's the worst thing that can happen? You step out and find out you're wrong. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing it with a really honest heart toward God, you're not going to get in trouble. He's going to help you back up, make an adjustment, send you in another direction. Yeah. And I mean, just like you, God called me and it was the most ridiculous thing in the world for me to step out and start trying to do what I'm doing today. But God chooses the weak and the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. What a blessing you are. Well, I and you do. You're I mean, awesome. In, in, in uh, my people in Germany, when I'm in Germany, I hear everybody tell me, I, I, I watch Joyce Meyer, I watch Joyce Meyer. And I'm, I'm so happy to hear that. I want to say congratulations. Well, thank you. I'm so blessed to be able to have the television ministry. Our, our ministries are all a little bit different. Yeah. You know, you're a great evangelist in Africa for years and years, and, and although I've been to Africa many times, I haven't had the same result that you've had, but God has put me on television oh. to preach this practical word yes. to people all around the globe. That's and, you know, wonderful. here again, if we just stay in with God, yes. you know, if we just get in the flow with God, then whatever we do is going to prosper and succeed. Yes. When things are just all messed up in our life, it's it's because we're not following God. Yeah. We either don't know how to, uh -huh. or we're not willing to. Yes. And so is there anything that you'd like to say just in closing to encourage people to, to be filled with the Spirit? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would like to say this. I, I struggled in, in my younger years, always with the thought of not being worthy. Mm -hmm. right. um, because, you know, the, the Holy Spirit is most holy, and I didn't feel all that right. holy yeah. all the time. Uh, until God gave me a revelation that shook me and blessed me and changed me. And that was this. I've suddenly found that the Holy Spirit is not repelled by my weaknesses. That's right. My weaknesses actually attract him. That's right. They attract his strength. Because he's, the scripture says he gives power to the faint and to those who have no might exactly. to increase his exactly. strength. My strength is made perfect in weakness. The only qualification we need and you need is cleansing by the blood of Jesus. Right. And then we qualify for this wonderful anointing, strength right. and power. And he will lead us not just from strength to strength, but also from victory to victory. That's right. And that is for us all. That's right. And it is very important that you don't discount yourself and think, well, that's nice for, you know, Pastor Reinhardt and Joyce to sit and talk about. They've got these big ministries. But, you know, I, I talked with Pastor before we started today, and I said, I really want to make this practical for the person at home that is trying to raise kids. They're trying to get up and drive in traffic, go to work. They're just trying to get through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But the thing is, is you can enjoy and have the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. And you know, one, one of the best ways to learn about what God has for you is to study the Word. And so today we're offering you, we talked about what, what should we offer today to go along with this teaching. And so this was my idea to offer this, so I want you to take my idea and get it. We're offering our Enjoying Everyday Life Study Bible. It's got a lot of my teaching notes in it. We work very, very hard on this. The, this particular version of the Study Bible has, has been, we've sold almost a million copies, and I don't tell you that to impress you, but to say that people are obviously enjoying it or they wouldn't keep buying it. It helps make the Bible understandable for you. And when you study the Word of God, 
it's going to help keep you filled with the power of the Holy Spirit all the time because he loves, loves, loves the Word. And so we're offering it today in the hardcover edition, but we also have, have it in leather. If you're interested in that, you can get online and get that or call the office. We even have it in different pretty colors if you want to get a pink one or a bronze one. Or I think we have some silver ones. But the point is not the color of the Bible, but the Word that's inside the covers. And there's power and life in the Word of God. So start there and learn all you can about the powerful ministry of the Holy Spirit that's available to you for your everyday life. God bless you. Gain insights and understanding for everyday living with today's offer, the Everyday Life Bible. This amplified version combines Joyce's well-researched notes along with her best teachings to make it one of the most comprehensive and easy to understand Bibles ever published. For a donation of $30 or more, you'll receive today's offer, the hardcover edition of the Everyday Life Bible. Call us toll free at 1-800-808-9077 or visit us at JoyceMeyer.org. You know, I would love to see you make plans and attend one of my conferences. You might say, well, why should I go to a conference when I can see you on TV every day, Joyce? Well, you know, our TV program is really just like an appetizer where being at the conference is the main course. It's just really wonderful to join in with other believers and to experience the presence of God during the praise and worship that we have. So please make plans to join us. I really would love to have you there. Don't miss your chance to see Joyce live. Inspiring worship, life-changing teaching. The Joyce Meyer Conference is coming to Albany, New York, October 9th through 11th, with Worship by Passion featuring Christian Stanfield and Christy Knuckles, and Tampa, Florida, October 23rd through 25th, with Worship by Matt Redman and Christy Knuckles. All sessions are free. For more information and complete conference schedule, visit us at JoyceMeyer.org or call toll-free 1-866-C-JOYCE. Thank you, friends and partners. Together, we're sharing the love of Christ around the world. To find out more, please contact us or visit us online at JoyceMeyer.org. Join us in partnership as we share the love of Christ around the globe. The proceeding was paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.